a 150% rise in the Chinese government's persecution of Christians in just one year. We don't carry arms. We will not carry arms. We don't teach carrying arms. But we can call on God. Our God is bigger than human ammunition. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Fifth Seal, episode 37. I'm your host, Norm, the Master's Dog Dunham, a.k.a. The Evangelical Norm. <clears throat> Excuse me. So The Fifth Seal is a podcast. Been doing longer than any other podcast I've got on the Evangelical Norm Network. Uh, I started this uh, about 10 years ago uh, with Persecuted Church Awareness Month. I didn't know who to talk to or how to find out how to make something like that official. So I just decided November is Persecuted Church Awareness Month, and I started counting down the top 30 countries on Open Doors USA's World Watch List. Uh, every day through the month of November, I would do a new country, bring stories about persecution, uh, to bring awareness to the situation of our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted because of their faith in Christ. A couple of years ago, I expanded that to the fifth seal, referencing the, the fifth seal in the book of Revelation, uh, talking about those who have been martyred for their faith, and expanded to the entire year, counting down the top 50 countries. So from January to October, Twice a month, I bring, again, stories of persecution around the world that our brothers and sisters are enduring and uh, prayer points for that particular week's uh, country on the world watch list. It is a countdown. That is why the episodes go backwards. So last week was episode 38. Today is episode 37. Next uh, two weeks from now will be episode 36. So that's just the way the whole thing works. With all that being said, that's a little background for the new subscribers to the podcast. And again, all that being said, it is Wednesday, July 28th, 2021. And this is our update on the persecuted church around the world. This is from persecution.org. Pastor brutally tortured by police in northern India. According to Morningstar News, Police in India's Uttarakhand state arrested and tortured a Christian pastor last month. Following the attack, the pastor and his family had been forced to flee 600 miles after continued harassment. On June 13th, police in Shyampur, located in the Haridwar dist Hyer Haridwar dist district, arrested Pastor Sanjay Kumar Bharati, his wife, his three children, and several members of his church. According to Morning Star News, the police were acting on a complaint that Pastor Bharati was, Bharati was violating COVID-19 restrictions by holding a small prayer gathering. After being taken to the Shyampur police station, officers began beating Pastor Bharati and questioning him about illegal religious conversions. Quote, as soon as I was taken inside the police station, a policeman slapped me three or four times on my face and punched me in my stomach. He hurled curses at me and accused me of alluring people and converting them, unquote, Pastor Bharati told Morningstar News. According to Morningstar News, police officers took Pastor Bharati into an inner room and where they wiped him on, whipped him on his legs and feet with a leather belt. Quote, hell broke upon me as, broke open on me as they mercilessly tortured me for 30 to 40 minutes. Unquote, Pastor Barati told Morningstar News, quote, I begged them to spare me, repeatedly asking them what was my fault, unquote. Pastor Barati reports that police interrogated him regarding illegal religious conversions, even though he was detained for allegedly violating COVID-19 restrictions. Police officers also demanded to know where Pastor Barati received funds to pay people to convert to Christianity. Before releasing Pastor Barati, police ordered him to leave the village where he and his family lived for the past 12 years. The officers warned that if they received one more complaint, they would arrest him and send him to jail. On June 15th, Pastor Barati, his wife, and four, four church elders visited the district superintendent of police in Haridwar to submit a complaint against the officers who tortured Pastor Barati. Since submitting this complaint, no action has been taken by police in Haridwar. On July 6, Pastor Bharati and his family moved from Shyampur and relocated 650 miles away. 
False accusations of forced religious conversions are often used by radical Hindu nationalists to harass Christians. In many cases, these false accusations are used to justify physical assaults. Across India, attacks on Christians and their places of worship continue to be reported in greater number. The proliferation of anti-conversion laws, which provide legal cover for radicals, is among the reason for the increasing number of attacks. So again, it's, we just see the the political and religious things that Christians endure right now in India. So not only do they, they receive it from radical Hindus, but the government is also uh, opposed to Christianity and will uh, use these false conversion uh, complaints to do exactly what we saw, torture, uh, beat, arrest, uh, detain, um, and other, otherwise persecute the Christians in the area. So let's pray for Pastor Bharati and his family, the church there, and um, just continue to, to pray for them to have uh, a strong faith and boldness for the Lord while they're there in India. And that brings us to our World Watch List uh, country for today. It is Mexico. Um, source of persecution, uh, well, just a few other uh Facts about Mexico. Let me not get ahead of myself. Uh, persecution score is 64. The region is Latin America. Persecution type, organized crime and corruption. Religion is Christian. Main religion is Christianity. The persecution persecution level is very high. Population is 133,870,000, of which about 128,229,000 are Christians, probably mostly Catholic, um, if that uh matters at all and kind of does but for the 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 issue of persecution um those who persecute christians don't recognize between uh false religions and true christians and anyone who claims the name of christ is persecuted because of their faith the government is a federal pre presidential republic and the leader is president andres manuel lopez obrador Move this picture out of the way here real quick. Get that off the screen. All right. What does persecution look like in Mexico and what is life like for Christians? The increasing presence of criminal groups and their struggle for territorial control create an environment where Christians, and particularly Christian leaders, face the constant risk of being targeted for violence. Christians are perceived as a threat to criminal activities because they oppose corruption and drug use or because they explicitly reject any demands or requests of criminal organizations. Christians who are outspoken at the hope of Jesus in the face of drug trafficking and violence are often targeted by gangs to remove any obstacle for their quest for control. In indigenous communities, anyone who decides to abandon the community's religious belief or syncretistic practices often face rejection and punishment in the forms of fines, incarceration, or forced displacement. Finally, there has been an increase in violent and discriminatory acts against Christians by people who believe Christians are bigoted, xenophobic, or opposed to women's rights. Churches have been attacked and graffitied by protesters, and reports on the ground suggest openness to Christian ethics in the public sphere is decreasing, even though Mexico is supposed to value pluralism. What has changed in Mexico? Mexico shot up on the 2021 World Watch List after being outside of the top 50 entirely last year. This is likely due to the rise in illegal activity that directly challenges Christian and Christian teaching. Drug tra traffickers and gangs retaliate against the target, retaliate against and target Christian leaders for opposing their criminal activities. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, their control over parts of Mexico has strengthened. Similarly, indigenous communities that oppose Christian converts have strengthened their autonomy during the coronavirus crisis, leading to increased difficulty for these followers of of Jesus. And finally, Mexican society seems to be increasing in its commitment to secularism instead of pluralism. Often Christian viewpoints are not welcome in the public sphere. So who's most vulnerable to persecution? Criminal networks have spread throughout Mexico. Although there are still two main cartels in Mexico, there are others. At least 17 criminal groups that have a significant presence in the country. That doesn't include the new or fag fragmented groups. Also, who also persecute Christians because they perceive Christians as a threat to their group's interests. 
Persecution against Christians inside indigenous communities occur particularly in the southern part of the country, and the rejection of Christian viewpoints in the public square is increasingly an issue throughout Mexico. So some prayer points for Mexico, things we can pray about. Pray for Christian leaders who risk so much to serve their church communities in places where they are targets of, or targets of organized crime. Ask God to spare them from the violence and to care for their entire family and church in dealing with the violence and trauma. Pray for Christians who convert out of their community's belief system. Pray for a softening of hearts among local leaders and that Christians would be safe and able to be a light for Christ's hope in the middle of a dark situ situation. And pray for Christians struggling to see how they fit into Mexican society. Ask God to give them compassion and courage as they risk their lives and livelihood to walk in faith. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much again for this opportunity we have to come um, and to join our voices together to raise up, uh, lift up our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted because of their faith in you. Lord, we praise you for the social media that you have provided that we can come together across thousands of miles and even across the span of time. As many will watch this video later and join their voices with ours as we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world. Lord, we, we lift up Pastor Bharati and his family in India. Lord, we pray first that you bring healing to his body as he's been uh, after the, the brutal attacks and, and torture that he endured at the hands of police there. Lord, we pray that you would continue to strengthen their faith in you, that you would use this uh, this situation and their testimony of this persecution, that you would use that, Lord, to draw others to yourself, that they would see as they are so willing to stand firm in their faith in you, even in the face of persecution, Lord, that you would use that as a witness to others, even their attackers and their persecutors, to draw them to faith and uh, in, and repentance and faith in you, Lord. God, bless them in their, their new situation, wherever it is that they've relocated to. Father, we ask that you would uh, raise up another church around them and that you would raise up leaders for the church uh, that has been left uh, with with no leadership in Cheyenne Poor as well, Lord. Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Mexico. We pray for the leaders who risk so much to serve their communities, even as they become targets uh, more and more of those involved in organized crime. We ask that you would spare them and their churches the violence that is happening in those areas and that, again, that you would use them as a light and a beacon to draw those criminals and those who are intent on illegal and sinful activities, that you would use them to draw them to a place of repentance. Lord, those who are involved or in indigenous communities and convert uh, and come to, to know you out of these local uh, community religions and beliefs, Lord, we pray that you would soften the hearts of the, the families and, and those others in the community, um, that they would uh, be open to letting these people who have converted to faith in you, Lord, that they would, can, they would be allowed to worship and um, freely express their faith, Lord, and that they would also be bold in preaching the gospel and calling others to repentance. And we pray for the whole society of Mexico, Lord, as, as it is moving more and more towards secularism, um, that you would continue to raise up a, a beacon, a, a light within the church, that they could truly be a, a city on a hill that could be seen, even, even if they are, are hated for their beliefs, Lord, that you would continue to strengthen them and embolden them to preach the gospel to those who need to hear it, um, those who would uh, express just... A, a faith in in uh, human thought and and reject the gospel and Lord that there would be but that there would be peace uh, that there would be the ability to freely express uh, the beliefs in you and that you would use that preaching of the gospel to draw others to yourself Lord and again Father we thank you for this time I thank you for everybody who is willing to come and 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 lift up their voices with me to, to pray for our brothers and sisters around the world. And Lord, we pray that you would continue to be glorified in, in the situations where others are persecuted because of their faith in you. And we pray that you're glorified through this podcast and through our prayers and through our uh, these attempts to bring awareness uh, to persecution around the world, Lord. And it is for your glory and in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. 
Amen. Hey, thank you guys for uh, being part of this, for coming and joining me. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. If you're over on the YouTube channel, the Evangelical Norm channel on YouTube, if you're watching on Facebook, uh, invite others to come to this Fifth Seal uh, Facebook group that would be willing to uh, join with us to pray for our brothers and sisters who would be interested in hearing about and just becoming more and more aware of the persecution that our brothers and sisters around the world endure because of their faith in Christ. And again, I appreciate everybody who's taken the time, the few minutes out of your day to, to join, to watch, and to pray. And as always, preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They are necessary. Until next time, Soli Deo Gloria.